All right, welcome to a special edition of The Locker Room. If you missed yesterday's uh, reaction to some news with the Texans, go back uh, in that video. You can also check out the uh, the old Robert Woods video, but we're joined now by a goat. It's it, John Weeks, <laughs> the longest tenured Texan, uh, joining the show. Weeks, I appreciate you, man. Um, we'll just jump right into it because people know you. What is it like for you? Because the I, I love the D'Amico Ryan's press conference, but one of the most, and you know where this is going, one of the most amusing things afterwards was when John Weeks was on the former teammates picture. He was in that picture, and then he was in the Texans Legends picture. What's it like to have someone that you were a teammate with now be your coach? Uh, it's interesting, right? Like the dynamic changes a little bit. You know, I've, I've had a I've had a great opportunity to sit down and talk with Coach and. You know, I told him, I said, I think one of the things I'm going to struggle with is you've always been cap to me, right? Like, I played with you for two years. You were cap. Uh, every time we saw each other for pregame warm-ups, it was cap. How you doing? How's it? Now it's like, oh, coach, sorry. You know, like, <laughs> no disrespect, right? So, I mean, he's been great about it. Um, I'm so, so thrilled about the hire. I mean, I don't think, you know, getting D'Amico here was just amazing. It's There's a great feeling. Um, I know everyone's excited. We're excited to have him in the building and uh, we're, we're ready to get to work. Can you kind of feel the vibes? Cause I, I can, um, I, I can kind of just feel the vibes. I know you're, you're in the building and stuff. Uh, we don't have to get too much into like what the vibes have been like the last couple of years, but obviously it's not ideal to, you know, be the third worst team in the NFL and then the second, but can you just kind of feel the vibes just going around town and stuff? Yeah, absolutely. I think, I, I think the greatest part is just that, you know, you can kind of feel that excitement in the air again, right? Like it's just there, right? Everyone's kind of juiced up. Everyone's pumped up. And not only for our current guys on the roster and current guys that I've spoken with, but all my old teammates, right? All my old teammates are super pumped up with the direction that we're going. And, and everyone's super excited to see what D'Amico and his staff are going to be able to do for the organization. Because if it's anything like we all know the man himself is, it's it's going to be sky's the limit and it's going to be awesome. Now, I'm, I'm speaking – for myself, and I'm, I'm, I guess I can speak for you because we're around the same age. Um, <laughs> I feel old every time I get out of bed, um, and I'm not, I'm not having to do what you have to do. Uh, you got the contract this year. What has it been like, like the last few years, where we've talked about? Are they going to bring back weeks? Are they going to bring back weeks? I remember a few years ago they brought in some meathead to try to compete with you. That was like an in Instagram selfie guy. I irrationally hated him. Um, <laughs> And you ended up beating him out. But what is it like the last few years? Have you have you like prepared? Maybe not like mentally just said this could be it. Have, have you like at any point been like, OK, this could be all she wrote? You know, I think I think when you're fortunate enough to play the game as long as I have and you understand the business, um, I think those kind of thoughts can start to creep in the creep in as you get older and older. Right. I mean, and you don't want to say creep in as a negative thing, but just looking at the the atmosphere from a realistic standpoint that you know maybe maybe the team's willing to go younger this year or or maybe you know am i falling off a little bit and and that kind of stuff but that's stuff that i've never really thought about um you know is i've always told myself as long as i don't feel like i'm a as long as i don't feel like i'm hurting the team as long as i still feel like i'm the best option for the position i'm gonna go as long until they tell me like hey all right man time to walk away and that's just kind of the attitude I've always taken. Um, as a competitor, I've always welcomed the competition. You know, um, I can't say that sometimes I haven't gotten frustrated with how things have shaken out when bringing guys in and that kind of stuff. But again, that's just part of the business, right? And that's just me being a perfectionist and thinking that I'm absolutely the best option. And you know, my ego getting in the way and and um, that's just kind of how I'm built, kind of how I'm wired. Um, but as long as I feel like I'm the best person for the job, I'm going to keep going until, you know, the Texans are like, dude, we've seen your face enough. Get the heck out of here. Right. So as long as, uh, as long as coach Miko and, and Nick and, and Frank are, are willing to have me, I'm, I'm going to stay and I'm going to keep doing it unless I think that I'm hurting the team. Then I'll stop. All right. So when they honored you for playing the most games as a Texan, you yeah. had a few people rocking your Jersey. You had Cal McNair, you had Hannah McNair, 
and you had Andre Johnson. Which yeah. one of those rocking your jersey is the most amusing? The most which, amusing. Which, like the most, the most like, oh yeah, they're rocking my jersey. That's the coolest <laughs> right there. No, I think I mean, getting I, Andre in your jersey is pretty rare. I, I, mean, I think that's I think that's that's kind of a dub right there. To having to having the greatest the greatest Texan to put on the jersey as of right now to to to, to come out at midfield and tell me congrats rocking the forty six definitely surprised me. But what the McNairs, uh, you know, what Miss McNair, Janice, uh, Cal, and Hannah, and the whole organization did for me for that week was so incredibly special. Something I'm so incredibly grateful for. Um, you know, as, as amazing as it was to see the goat rock in your Jersey, I, I could probably go back and I couldn't tell you a lot of times, if any, if you've ever seen the owner rocking a, a long no. snapper Jersey, you know? Love so it. again, uh, incredibly grateful for what the organization, uh, Mr. McNair, uh, Cal Hanna, uh, and Miss Janice, they did for me that week. Cause that was just truly special. Now you came in here with a hot take. You just said Andre was the goat. There's going to be fans saying what about jj you got you got andre over jj hot, hot, hot take week see that's fine that's fine that's fine so, so JJ, you would you would JJ's say Dre's the goat jj's time is definitely coming um i think if you talk to the man himself i think he would say andre's the goat the so. the question i have and it's we got a lot of listener questions and if y'all have questions just put them in uh for weeks um this was the number one thing I said when JJ retired, and, and you know him uh, better than I do. What the hell is this guy going to do now that he retired? Because like it's th th you get all these suggestions, you hear all these things, and there's just so many possibilities. A lot of times when someone stops playing football, it's like they want to do absolutely nothing. I don't think that's how JJ is wired. So what do you? Th what in the hell is JJ Watt going to do? You know what? JJ is a brand new dad. So JJ is not going to have a lot of time. JJ is going to have a lot of stuff he's going to have to do. Um, but, you know, wherever he decides to make his home, I know he loves the Valley of the Sun in Phoenix. We've talked about that, me being from Arizona. And there's plenty of golf out there in Arizona. So um, I think our, golf? I try to golf. Um, there was a there was a point there for a while where I became about a mid '80s guy, and then I had two kids, and that game has gone to complete crap, you know. So, but uh, I think JJ's shown us that he's really starting to enjoy his golf. Um, I think he did the Waste Management Open with uh, with John Rahm, if I'm correct. So I think you got that going there. And then um, I goofed on him the other day. I think you probably saw it too, but he had uh, he had the ice skates on. And I was like, you can't, you man, can't take, you can't take that out of that man. That man loves him some hockey. So I think JJ is going to have plenty to do, but again, I think he's going to own some sort of squad, isn't he? Soccer. Uh, I don't, maybe, but he's got that little man now. Like, he's got plenty, plenty, plenty of stuff to do now. Uh, Lado P asks why Jersey number 46? Are you going to play till you're 46? <laughs> I can promise you by 46, I will be retired. I will not be here. When I'm 46 year old, you know, 46, as much as I love the number was, uh, unfortunately there's no good story behind it. it was completely random. You know, I was in shock the day that I had signed. Um, someone asked me what number they gave me. I told them I have no clue. And then like two days after I had signed, I noticed there was a number on my locker and I've ridden with 46 ever since. Now you've been a friend of in the loop. You, uh, donated your, uh, your grill, uh, yeah. for us to, for us to, uh, give to a listener or give away. Hopefully, Actually, I, I, I should say wifey gave us permission to give away the grill. I'll say, I'll yeah. say that, but yeah, uh, hopefully and, that's being used to get put and good to use. You know, it was a very, very nice grill. Another friend of the show guy. We've had some fun with one of our favorites, Frank Ross. He's back. Okay. Uh, how excited were you to uh, hear that Frank Ross is going to be back? I love Frankie. Frankie's great. Frankie brings a ton of energy to the, to the room. Very smart. Um, willing to, you know, he's, he's tough on us, but he's also willing to hear us out and, and listen to our suggestions. And I think that's why we all do so well in that room. Why, why the special teams unit is so special. Um, you know, Frank has a plan for us every week and we go out and do our best to execute it. But Frank's not afraid to listen to what we have to say as players. And, um, I love having Frank in that, uh, Frank is the head guy. I love his assistant, Coach Baker. I think whenever he wants to take a shot, he's going to be a great special teams coach. And I love that special teams room. And I'm excited to see, uh, 
you know, what we can build off from last year. You know, we had a special group last year. Uh, we all understand in that room that, you know, the group's going to change. That's just kind of the nature of the business. Um, but Frank holds us to a high standard and a standard that, you know, we're all kind of willing to go attack. So we're excited. Top five uh, DVOA, uh, top special teams unit in the league to, on, on uh, some measurements. So y'all definitely did a good job. Who's the funniest teammate you've ever had? Uh, Kareem Jackson, hand down. Kareem Jackson, no questions Kareem asked? Jackson, no questions asked. The funniest human being in the face of the planet. Also one of the best guys in the world too, but yeah. just so funny, you know? Um, I mean, I have to imagine at one point, Landry, you were in the locker room for a KJAC TV segment. Yeah. yeah. And those things are just have me yeah. rolling. So KJAC. One of a kind, um, love him to death, uh, you know. He's one of the ones that I miss the most that I would have liked to have seen uh, stay around, uh, especially yeah. as a safety. He was the – I mean, I thought he was the best – he was the best player – he was the best player on the field in um, 18 for the first five games, and then everyone got hurt, and he had to go back to corner. But he was playing some good yeah. safety. I'm not yeah. going to lie. I was actually kind of glad to see him uh, – do what he did when he came back uh, against Denver. I, I know that was a, I know that was a tough one, but I was I was I was somewhat happy for him. It was a frustrating game, but I was somewhat happy for him. I'll be honest. Yeah, yeah. I'm uh, again a huge fan of KJX. Um, one of the funniest guys, if obviously the funniest teammate I've ever had, um, and just uh, a great dude. Teammate who would win an MMA World Heavyweight Tournament. If you had oh, a tournament with all yeah. your teammates. Street uh, MMA fighting style, who would win the tournament? Whew, that's a great question. I don't know if I have a good answer for that one. The first person that pops in my head with my – is this current teammates? Is this like – All time, 2010 to now. All team, 2010 to now. Oh, boy. Uh, world – I mean, heavyweight, you got to roll with – I mean, D. Brown was a monster. Still Dwayne. is a monster. I mean, I think he's going on what seventeen now. He just decided to come back. Dwayne's a Dwayne big man. Would have something. Uh, JJ you know who would, would be in there. JJ, you know who? Um, Cushing, you know, like, Cushing. I don't know if he'd qualify as the heavyweight, but I don't know. I don't well, know how many people want to fight Cushing. Yeah, I wouldn't mess with Cush ever. Um, and I guess that definitely depends on what your weight classes are. If Cush would be, you know, I guess when I went heavyweight, I went straight to my big guys. Um, but if Cush qualifies, Cush probably takes the cake. You know, obviously with his Brazilian jiu-jitsu background as well. But you know who had a mixed martial arts background that I found out only because of Cam, because they were teammates in Philly, was Brandon Brooks. Yes. And Brandon was a big boy now, too. Yeah. And Brandon yeah. was a big boy now, too. So it'd be interesting to see if Brandon or, you know, they got him to the ground, what could happen. But, uh, I mean, it's it's Cush hands down if, there's, if the if Cush is considered the proper weight limit. Do you have a favorite head coach of all time? Because you've played, you've played for most of them. A favorite head coach of all time? Oh, yeah. man. I I have been so fortunate to play with so many good head coaches. Um, I can't say that I have a favorite. I'm incredibly grateful for Coach Kubiak and Coach Joe Marciano for just giving me my first opportunity. Those two guys are always going to be incredibly special to me because they gave me my shot. Um, but every coach after – has treated me so well and has treated me with so much respect that I, I I can't really pick a favorite, to be honest with you guys. I'm sorry about that one. I know that's probably going to get a lot of, nah, a lot of booze on there, but. It's all good. <laughs> but, uh, uh, have you ever felt uh, snubbed of a Pro Bowl? Never felt snubbed of a Pro Bowl. I've never felt snubbed. Um, again, when it comes to me, unfortunately, you know, I think this business, we all kind of have to have an ego, right? So I always feel like one of the I'm one of the top guys. Um, um, I'm always grateful for Pro Bowl Pro Bowl alternates or you know any kind of recognition is incredibly grateful. Um, I've never felt snubbed. Um, I've never looked and I've never had a situation where the AFC guy that went where I was kind of like he didn't deserve it. If that makes sense. Yeah. Now, I always – I feel like – I mean, if you ask me for the last 14 years, I should have gone 14 times. But with that being said, every guy that has gone, I have never once been like, oh, I feel like I should go over him. That guy has completely deserved it. And I think the cool thing that's happened with the Pro Bowl is that the Pro Bowl has kind of gotten put into the players' hands. So, you know, we kind of get to vote for ourselves more than we ever really did before. Usually 
the snappers when they went, especially when I went, the staff took me, right? So the Packers staff decided my Pro Bowl year that, hey, he deserves to go, so they brought me. Now, you know, we all get to vote for the guys that we think think get to go. So it's just pretty cool. What's your go-to spot to eat around town? If if you and wifey get to get away, what are y'all what are y'all go-to spots to grub? Dude, me and wifey haven't got away in like five years. <laughs> but if, if y'all are ordering takeout, let's say ordering uh, takeout, uh, where y'all geez. where y'all ordering? Ordering takeout. Uh you know, this is gonna I might get a lot of heat for this one, especially, okay. but I, I let I you know, I kind of default to wife to the missus on that one. Okay. At the end of the day, I just kind of – I'm pretty easy going, can kind of find anything anywhere. So if we're ever really feeling something, I'll, you know, hey, Amanda, what do you want? And I'll let her kind of decide, and then I'll just kind of go from there. Um, but we're huge fans of Mastro's. Okay. Because we had we have the original Mastro's City Hall out in ten, uh, out in Scottsdale. Okay. You know, butter cake and stuff. So if you can get us the Mastro's, we'll be there in a second. Where, where did your wife went to Arizona state, right? Yeah. So she got her, uh, her undergrad at Arizona state, her Man. law degree at Syracuse. Uh, Arizona state's a wild place, John. Well, Arizona, nah, Arizona state, ain't, Arizona state ain't Baylor. I've, I've been hey, to Baylor, yeah. Arizona state. I've had some wild times at Arizona state, sir. There's a reason that we didn't start talking until she was getting her law degree at Syracuse. Landers. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Cause I, yeah, Arizona, yeah. Hey, and I, I have, yeah, Arizona State was wild. What was Baylor like when you went there? Baylor was great. I loved Baylor. Um, you know, I grew up a military kid, so I traveled a lot. Um, never really stayed in a spot for too long, so I was really excited to get out of Phoenix and go somewhere for college. Um, Baylor was great. Small town, um, you know, 90 minutes from Austin, 80, 80 miles from Dallas, uh, I really liked it. I, the only thing I wish is I wish we just could have been better when I was there. Yeah. You know, we just, we weren't unfortunately any good. We were, we'd win our first two or three games against pretty weak opponents. And then we get into the big 12 and just get smacked around. And that was, you know, that was tough, but that was for me great because that was to me when the big 12 was the best conference in football. So I was always going up against NFL talent, um, which I think has helped me through my career. Right. So, but your boys, uh, your boys never treated me very kindly. Those Longhorns when I play, when I played for Baylor. So that, that's changed. It was now. tough. It that was tough. Changed. It has changed, and it's been great. And it's been great to see it change because the the town is so great. The the school is so cool that you know when the athletics are doing great, everything's just going. So yeah, unfortunately, you don't I don't recognize been, it now. Even from when you were yeah, there, you don't that's, recognize that's what Baylor. I'm say, you know, unfortunately, I haven't been back to Baylor since. They did a – before they got rid of Floyd Casey, which I don't know how long the new stadium has been open. That's been a while. Yeah, they had like a – they kind of had a reunion game. If you were a player between 2000, 2000, whenever, when they moved on from Floyd Casey, you could go and be honored at the field. So I went down there. That was the last time I was there, which to me feels like maybe 11, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. And you knew my you knew my best friend from elementary, Chelsea Lake. Who went I to did. Baylor. So we That's, used to go trick or treating together. Her dad, right, rest in peace, to Ray. Uh, her mom, yeah. Kathy. They used to take us trick or treat. They were like the cool trick or treat family. So we would take like <laughs> pillowcases and stuff like that. What a and small then she world moved, that was. She moved to Keller and dominated softball, and I stayed she in. She was the area, unreal, yeah. an unreal softball player. It was amazing to watch. Enjoyed watching her play. Uh, you know, uh, dated and ended up marrying a good friend of mine uh, from the team, and they're doing fantastic. One of my favorite parts about playing the Cowboys when I get to play them is is I bring them to the game so I can see them afterwards and catch up, and they're doing great. But she sent me some crazy tweet that you sent out and was like, can you explain this? And I was like, how are you following Landry? <laughs> and she told, no, wait, me about your guys, then she told me about your guys' uh, your past, and I was like, get out of here. That's a dude, small she, she messed up the cafeteria <laughs> wall one time because – like they had like a show and tell and her show and tell was like to do softball and she was doing like the fast pitch and her dad came and was like catching her and they did it indoors and she missed high and like put a oh, hole, no. hole in the cafeteria wall. Dude, she was, a, she was a special athlete to watch. I always goof with their kids when I see them. You know, I said, daddy might be the big one, but mommy was way better of an athlete than daddy ever was. So no doubt. But. Um, what teammate, and this is the biggest long shot ever, what teammate, if you needed to be bailed out of jail, would you call? 
Um, I mean, that one's easy, but that's just because I'm with him 24-7. That's Fair Baron. Fair Baron? If I need to be bailed out of jail, I'm calling Emi, and I'm telling him to drive his little butt up there and get me out. What's he like? We 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 get to talk to him, but we don't we don't really like get to get to know Fairbairn. What what is Fairbairn like? Yeah, Kaimi's kind of, great. Um, you know the, the the only negative I'll ever say about him, and he's he's that friend of yours that is good at everything. Okay. So he just frustrates the crap out of you, right? I think, you know, I don't know, you know, for those who follow him on social media, he's not super active, but um, great ping pong player, and I think just okay. actually went out to the Super Bowl and played ping pong in some little ping pong championship against like Christian McCaffrey and all those guys and actually did pretty well. Right. Um, never golfed until he started, you know, playing with me. And then all of a sudden he's like a low eighties. If, he's if he's on, he's going to break. I 80 hate times. guys like that, like, man. Just one of these guys that's just so good at everything. But um, he is one of my closest friends. He is a great human being. Um, and he's a fantastic NFL kicker, and he's going to be for a while. Um, great leg, super strong leg, but Kaimi sets himself apart because he has the mentality that you need from your kicker. He has the have to move on to the next kick regardless of what the outcome was for the previous kick. And that's not always easy because of, right, the – what am I trying to say? Because of how important one of those kicks might be that he doesn't hit. Yeah. Right? But to be a good kicker in this league – and he understands it, you know, sometimes those big kicks that you have to make, if you don't make it, there's going to be the harsh criticism, but you got to make the next one. And that's how you stay in this league for a while. And that's how you become a great kicker. And that's what he is. And that's what he has. So he's a special kicker. Um, I think he'll, he'll kick as long as he wants to kick. Um, I tell you what, I'm thrilled that he's here because he's special. Um, same with my punter. I'm thrilled my punter's here. My punter can put the yeah, ball. He's been good, good. man. He's, he Bill, can Burr's been, ball, Bill Burr's been nice, man. He can put that ball wherever he wants to put. The stuff he can do with the football are amazing. Yeah, he can um, boom that. If you, ever, if you ever get a chance to watch him in practice. I do. If you can see how on point he can put a ball from 50 yards away by running, like, you know, he's got his Australian rugby football background. What's he so, like? What is he like? Is he quiet? Yeah. Cam's quiet. Cam's quiet. Um, but Cam, Cam's the same, man. I mean, I, we have such a great group, and that's what makes going to work fun, right? Frank and Bake are so great at what they do. But Frank, Bake, Emi, Cam, and then I'll include myself in this. We all get along so well that it's a group that you just enjoy going to work with, and that makes it easier. Um, but Cam, is he's more on the quiet side. Um, if we ever had to do an interview, the three of us, it would probably be just like this with the other two over my shoulder, just kind of smiling. Just Neither of them like to talk too much. But again, I'm incredibly grateful for both of them. Uh, couldn't do what I do without either one of them. Um, and both, you know, have bright futures and I'm excited to see where they go. Um, what is something about long snapping? This is from Brandon Lenz. What is something about long snapping that the average fan has no idea about? Um, you know, if I was to go over it, I think, you know, nowadays people don't, I don't know, I, don't, I guess I don't know how to, way to put this without sounding like a jerk face, but nowadays I don't think people realize like the precision and the athleticism you have to do to do the job, right? Like most people you talk to, everyone thinks they can be a long snapper and that's just, you understand that from the outside looking in, but what people don't understand is that. The ball's got to be at this placement. We talk about Cam, right? You know, funny story. If he, if I, he might get mad I say this out loud, so hopefully it doesn't get back to him. Cam has different kicks because he can do special things with the football. But with those different kicks, Cam's like Cam likes the ball in different spots on his body, right? So there's a certain kick where Cam prefers the ball on a hip to where there's a certain kick where Cam prefers the ball up top by his shoulder or his face. There's a certain kick that we're doing where Cam likes the ball a little bit behind. So there's, it's not just throw the ball, right? It's I have to deliver that ball pinpoint accuracy at a good velocity speed to help with the operation time. And then when my head's between my legs, I have to get back and block these skilled pass rushers who are paid a lot of money to rush offensive tackles off the corner in the a gap with my head between my legs. Right. Yeah. 
So, you know, one thing I always tell people when they say it's not that tough a job, I always bring up there was one year and obviously this was this goes back a little bit. But there was one year where we had a special package and I don't know if we ever ran it in the game. But it was they would spread it out and they would put JJ and Clowney tights in my A gaps. So I was responsible for blocking Mr. Watt or Mr. Clowney when both of them are getting a head start on me with my head between my legs while I'm trying to deliver a perfect ball to my punter and then I have to get up and block them. So it's a little more difficult than just delivering the ball, right? And I could go on and on forever about it, but I'm not trying to sound too egotistical or no. I mean, or, dude, it's, uh, it's, it's obviously it's, a pretty it's hard a, gig. It's a specialty, is exactly what it is, right? I, I've and tried that, to like it. I don't think people understand, like even from this is from Cam's perspective. Like, dude, you can break a finger if you don't catch those snaps. Like it is, it, it's it's coming in there. What do you know the miles per hour that it's that it's coming out? Do you do you time that or so that? I I don't. I don't really talk. I've been timed once. I have been timed once. I'm not big into the timing. Yeah, because you don't probably don't want to do it as hard as you can. But my snaps, my snaps now, as I've gotten a little older, which I snapped a lot harder when I was younger. But my snaps now, from snap to delivery to cam to about when he catches it, is about 0.68 to 0.70 in the time. Okay. Right. I have been clocked, you know, and I'm going to do this, everybody, so chill out, because I'm not saying this is legit. Um, but I have been told that my ball has been clocked at 40 miles per hour. Okay, that's... That's what I've been told. Now, that, I, I, personally, in the I personally, I don't believe it, you know, but I was at this snapping camp, and one of these coaches had a so-called radar gun, and they <laughs> shot my ball, and it said 40 miles per hour. I don't think that's true, but that's what I've been told. On field goals, does it change? Because you say you say it changes on like punts. Like does it, does like distance in field goals? Does the does the snap change at all, or is it is it the same pretty much on field goals? Yeah, no. So on field goal, you know, it's not so much about velocity anymore, right? It's about a consistent location, a good ball to give to the holder to where the laces are either perfectly straight or the way we work it. If they're not straight at worst, make sure the laces are kind of inside the catch hand. So as okay. he's coming down, the laces are straight to give Kaimi the best possible chance to hit the ball. Um, okay. You know, because from what I'm told and most kickers, if there's any kickers on here can, can probably speak better to it, right? If the laces are a little bit, if they're not at least forward, if they're pointing off to the right or the left, you'll find some kickers that say like if they're straight back and you can't turn it, just leave them straight back the ball will tend to be pulled, right? The ball will kind of fall off to the direction the laces are. Okay. That's at least what I'm told. I never kicked the ball, people, so like, don't don't listen to me on that one. But So my job, and we're about eight and a quarter, to be pretty consistently either in the palm of the hand or straight up. What do you do at halftime? What some kickers have said they don't even go in the locker room. I know there was like the uh, video of McPherson – two years ago where he was watching oh, yeah. uh, the Super Bowl, yeah. Super Bowl <laughs> halftime. What, what is it? What does John Weeks do at halftime? Y'all's halftimes are pretty quick. I noticed you're out there pretty soon. Sometimes you're out there even like when the, the halftime's still going on. Yeah. I just kind of, I go in, um, Frank and bake do a good, a good job on um, talking to us, hearing us out, seeing if there's anything that we've seen on the field with a return or a rush or anything like that. And usually if there's nothing special, it's kind of go in, quick bottle of water, and then walk right back out. And that's really okay. it. Not special. Okay. There you go. So how long do you want to do this? What's Do we have an age? Again, man, you know, as long as, as, long I'm, as, feeling, as, long as I'm feeling physically good and as long as, as long as I don't feel like I'm hurting the team, I'm going to keep going. But I also don't want to be one of these snappers, and there's been a few – I don't want to be one of these snappers that should have retired two years before he retires. If that mm -hmm. makes sense. Yeah. You know, I, think I don't want to, that's any I don't want to, yeah, I don't want to go out quote unquote, kind of embarrassing myself. Yeah. Um, now we win the Super Bowl this year and there's a good chance your boy rides off in the sunset. So, you know, um, again, a lot of stuff can change when you win that, when that big, big thing on your finger, you know, you can put that big ring on your finger. So, 
Um, but I, I feel great right now. I love the direction that the organization's going. I love the people that are in the building. Um, you know, from the, from some of the staff that I've gotten to meet from D'Amico himself, uh, from Nick, I, I just, I love the direction everything's heading. I would love to be around when this thing starts picking up steam again. Um, because I think it's going to, and I'm very excited and I'm excited for the city. I'm excited for the fans. Um, and I, I, I'm excited to get back to work with my guys when we get in the building. Yeah. You got, uh, you, you got, you got some time now you need to, I, I understand you're, you're hit, you're doing the rodeo and all that you got in the rodeo. I, yeah. How many kids do you have? So I have a five-year-old. She'll be six in July. Is she and already I, in kindergarten or is she going to be in kindergarten? She's in pre-K right now. Okay. Uh, we'll be in kindergarten next year, next semester. And then I have a two and a half year old. She'll be three in September. And she's at, she's the handful. Yeah. She's the handful. She, she kind of controls the family. Once she starts talking a little bit better, I uh, think, I think me, mom and an older sister are in a lot of trouble. Yeah. I got, I got mine coming. She, she knew to be born before football season. So she knew Love that it. dad had to, had to work. Yeah. Uh, right. It's going to be during camp in August. So it's, hospital's close from NRG, so I might be out there at camp with y'all and just have to rush over. But, yeah, I've been told the, the girl dad thing is very, very rewarding, but you, you just be ready is, is all, be, I, all I get. Be ready. Be ready. That's a, And that's the best advice you're going to get. Be ready and, and prepare. try to be prepared, but know that you're not prepared. Do your best to be as prepared as possible, but realize that no matter what happens, you're not prepared at all for anything. People keep asking about the quarterback. Uh, do you have any opinion on the quarterback, or do you just you just want some good quarterback play? Do I have any opinion about the quarterback? Yeah, uh, th th there's been a lot uh, of Bryce. There's been a lot of Bryce Young, C.J. Stroud arguments going on around here. For, there's, there's even some for, David. Do you Newton. having to deal with? Do what? Hey, listen, I listen to the show now. Like, yeah. uh, I'm a fan. I'm a fan of the show. I love you and John. Um, but I get to I get my morning dose on my way to workouts. So I hear Seth and uh, Sean talking and I hear you and John. And then I, I hear our boy Clint and um, show uh, show talking. So I, I get a little bit of everybody. Right. Like I get yeah. I get the mornings on the way to the workouts. I get you on the way. I get you and, and John on the way home. And then I get show and Clint when I'm going to pick up the girls from school. So I hear all of it. Yeah. So I know you guys have been talking a lot about it. We've been talking about Bryce. We've been, it's been very Brycey. I've been very yeah, Brycey. Man, you know, regardless of who it is, young or old, you know, and I'm, I'm piggybacking off of you right now because of some of your conversations I heard you having the other day. Young or old, I want a guy that comes in, takes control. Um, and the most it's the most important position in football. We all know it. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, he needs to know whoever it is that as a special teams unit and defense unit, we have his back. And we just want to go out there and play and just put us in the best positions to win football games. And that's all you can ask from that quarterback. You know, I think I think D'Amico said it best in his presser, right? It's not just one person. And that's why football is such a fantastic game. It's all 11 of us, right? It's yeah. all 11 of us, defense, offense, and special teams-wise. So whoever it is, young Speaking or old. Speaking like a veteran, he's giving me the cliches now. That's that's what I'm talking about right there. Okay, so I just want to know what you could have done. I'll you do know it. what you could do. do it. I'll do it. I just want to be the best teammate possible. You are, and, and that's and that's I, why you're I, you, and that's why you're still here. That's 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 <laughs> because of your performance, away. and you're the best. Gonna I'm just gonna walk away with that statement, right? That's there. why you're so loved. And this yeah. is the other thing: you could have decreased my stress. You could have just given us like a bad snap against Indy, just given us like a safety or something Man, like that through the end zone. Crap. That one, no way, no way was that ever happening. <laughs> Weeks, I appreciate you, man. Thanks for uh, right, thanks dude. for coming through. Again, thrilled that you're back. Like thrilled that you're back. Uh, it, it, it seems like, you know, the last, I, these have got to be the last, the, the last three years have got to be very rewarding. Cause we had you released. We had you brought back. We had like some meathead coming in, trying to compete with you. And now we got, uh, those are my words. Not, uh, not, <laughs> your, but, uh, now we got, we, we got you back and it's good because as much as the vibes are different, it's good to be able to look out there on that side field and see 46 out there still doing his thing. Uh, well, I appreciate so it. Much appreciation, man. You're a, you're a staple in this city, and I appreciate you for coming through, man. 
Yeah, man, absolutely. Thanks for having me. Always a pleasure. All right. There you go. The man, the myth, the legend, the goat, uh, John Weeks uh, here in the locker room. Subscribe, like, appreciate everyone for coming through. Um, this has been another edition of the locker room. That was the goat, uh, John Weeks. You can go back and listen to the reaction and watch the reaction of uh, all the news that went down yesterday. And I uh, appreciate everyone for coming through. Have a good weekend. Uh, talk to y'all later. No matter what happens with the Texans, just remember we're all in this together. Have a good one.